and we're live. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the dojo. Um, I have a whole bunch of people with me today. I am the Phil Spaniard, as you probably are painfully aware of. Um, and today we are going to be talking about the testing grounds that we've just had, which was on Valkyrie, um, Tiandi, and Counter Guard Break changes. And I have with me a bunch of big thinkers from the competitive scene. We've got Freeze here. Yeah, yo. hello. Hello. We have, uh, we've got Norgoz. Hello, everyone. Hello. We've got Blitz. Who didn't take hear my cue to unmute himself and say hello. It's fine. We've got Blitz okay, here. Hello. hello. Yeah. <laughs> and Rippy. Yo. And also we've got Shep Dude and Stag here as well. Hello. Greetings. If anybody else wants to come in and give their opinions, you're more than welcome. The pings. I have put some pings in, in places. I'm hoping some some people show up um, to give us uh, their feedback on the changes. Because these... I have heard from the devs that this is a very useful format. They enjoy hearing sort of this open discussion type thing. So, um, I guess we should start at... Actually, if you can show us the uh, the patch notes, sort of the, the yes, TG yes. article, so we can go through that. Uh, We're going to start in reverse um, and go from the counter guard break changes, which are at the bottom of the page. Um, mm -hmm. So, if we get down here, we, so basically, the this is the probably the smallest um, smallest set of changes in in the thing, and probably also the least controversial that will have fewest people complaining about, um, or even I don't think I've heard a single set of complaints, which is counter guard breaks have been changed. So essentially, the the way it's phrased in the patch notes says the counter guard breaking now takes seven hundred and sixty six milliseconds down from eight hundred milliseconds. But in practice, what that means is that you have one frame or 33 milliseconds of frame advantage when you counter guard break versus having your guard break be countered, as it were. So uh, essentially, that means that if somebody is spamming guard breaks at you, you can buffer a heavy attack and that will beat their guard, pardon me, <clears throat> that will beat their guard break. Um, where in the past, you couldn't do that and if you threw a heavy off somebody who was spamming guard breaks at you and you got frame neutral, it would grab your st heavy startup and you'd be caught. So the only thing you could do would be to throw a light attack, which is very easy to parry. So this is a quite well... It's a fairly, a fairly minor change in the, in, the, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Most players probably won't notice it. You but... Want me to show it? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great if you could show it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in in uh, at least in one v ones at high level, this is quite a big impact. I was hoping we might have uh, Anton Sharp as well, but right, here we go. This is some freezes freezes videos. Um, I mean, Anton is one of the the worst defenders when it yeah, comes to that. So you can see on the left side, it uh, the GP doesn't land. Oh, no, it does land. I think. Yeah, it does land, and on the right side, it doesn't. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much how it works. Um, yeah, Anton is like well known to be a bit of the uh, to be the yeah he uses this technique quite a lot. Blitz, what are your thoughts on on this change and and do you use this technique very much? It's going to affect your one v ones. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a very good change. It really helps, really helps a lot of characters. Like if you didn't have a very strong backlight, then it was very annoying to initiate from neutral. Yeah. Um, and I guess characters that have like low guard rate vulnerability openers, like um, I guess sh fast bashes, that kind of thing, tend to suffer a little bit less. But any of these characters that uh, use soft faint from heavies, or you want to get into offense from a heavy attack, this is quite quite a good change for them. Um, the other thing that this changes is with the reduced pushback distance when counter guard breaking, you now cannot get a free back dodge after. Um, countering a guard break, so pre or having a having a guard break countered. So previously, you could have a guard break countered, and you'd just be able to back dodge for free, and the opponent wouldn't be able to catch you with a guard break. They could catch you with other things, like if they buffered a forward dodge bash, for example. But in general, it was quite a good way to be able to 
escape from mix-ups, especially if the opponent doesn't have very good chase moves, so like if they're in revenge, for example. Um, but yeah, overall, little changes, but at least I'm personally very pleased with these two changes. Uh, anybody else? Any other thoughts on what your opinions are on these changes? That is very great change. Like, as Blitz said before, it really allows more char to um, not be scared to get into their offense, right? Because um, getting into your offense with a lie is super risky, so being able to just heavy through guard break attempt and, well, let's say, like, the guard break you one time, usually the second one, um, you need to beat it with a light or a zone, which is very risky. Now, you can just throw heavy and get to your, your mix-up, so yeah, definitely great changes. Was definitely needed for a while. I'm happy that uh, they made it into the TG. Needs to be put into game as soon as possible, really. Yeah, um, I think this is this. So basically, this this change was was necessary at least with the with the um, back when heavy guard break vulnerability got changed from four hundred milliseconds to three hundred thirty three milliseconds. Which can you remember when that was, freeze? Um... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. A couple months ago, oh, it was a while. It was a while. You mean the heavy GP ball? Yeah, yeah. They were they were all 400, and they put it 433, which yeah, yeah. make it so you could and uh, couldn't be the yeah, GP yeah. anymore. And made it, I think, because um, with delayed faint, you used to be able to early parry and be the delayed faint to GP with that. So I think that's the main reason why they had a GP yeah, ball in the good. first place. It was a good. It was a good change, and it, 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 it but it messed up with that thing, which uh, at yeah. first that. At first, it wasn't super noticed, but as like a, especially Anton started using that, and more people, um, people started realizing it's really annoying when you can't get into your chain, you know, because the guy's just pressing one button in front of you. So, yeah, it started becoming an issue later on. Yeah, I think I remember. I remember at the time, Setmix pointed out this was going to be a change that was going to affect things. And I think I also pointed out as well as should have been mm -hmm. changed. And I think it, I think it was more than a year ago that that changed to heavy. It was spot. a while ago, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming, and yeah, really good things. Um, does anybody have anything? Has anybody heard any any negative things at all about this change? Um, I mean, I don't know how do I how do I, let's see how do I word this? Because it's basically buff and revenge, right? People have been requesting like buffs to the revenge, but I'm not sure whether they actually want that mm. because then they, I don't know, they die more, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure because it's going to be annoying to people that that they can't escape people in revenge as easily anymore. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I think we can hear we will hear complaints eventually, like how why can't I get away anymore or something. But I don't know. It's once again things you just need to ignore. I but I can see a little bit of pushback. Is basically what I'm getting at. If I can piggyback off of that, I can say that. Ultimately, what you're describing, I believe the same people that are going to make that complaint are going to be the same people that make the complaint now that, oh, well, I got revenge and they just run away from me. What do I do? You'll end up having the same thing thing here where they'll be doing the opposite. Like, well, now I can't ever get away from revenge. If they get they get revenge and so and, and, and I just I, my team gets destroyed. And I think what it will hopefully do is encourage more players to get more in tune and more in depth with learning how revenge functions and utilize that the utilize their ganks and their abilities a little bit better. <laughs> I mean, I feel that's um potentially wishful thinking if we can maybe change the games better. <laughs> oh, Anton's in chat. Come well, if you if you don't have time to for you know, come and join us for a little bit and then go for your wands tourney, which I didn't realize it was a wands tourney. Hopefully it won't be this won't be to take us too long to talk about in general. So go on, Anton. It's well, I want to hear your perspective on it. Um Yes, an hour cut room. I mean, Shell, you can come. Yeah, you've got an hour for once twenty. Zanton need, he needs that much time to prepare. Himself. He doesn't need to warm up or anything. It's yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need to take it seriously or anything. Hey, hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I do not. Yeah, the Thank defender of the, the defender of the GP is banned, which I am not <laughs> defend because I don't mind the change. I feel like the change is impactful, but at the same time, I don't think it's that impactful. Like, uh, in a way, like, yes, you now cannot spam GPs anymore. Uh, so people have to use their brain now. They can't just, you know, spam GP and parry the light every time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I still feel like that thing is still going to be in there. It's just, that, it's just that, like, instead of just spamming GPs every time without only 
have to worry about the, the light being thrown to stop the GP spam is that if the guy faints the heavy now, you still get the GP because you can GP the faint, uh, the faint recovery and you basically get the GP as well, but it's just more complicated to get it consistently because it's always a read and it's more than just pairing a light, it's just, you know, expecting the guy to faint his heavy every time now, which is, uh, which implicates more reads and I think it's mm -hmm. a good change in the end in turns uh, because it makes like characters like Shama, for example, more uh, more strong and like characters like Aramusha that have a very slow heavy, uh, stronger as well, like Raider, like all these characters. I think Raider also got uh, gets his, uh, you know, GP into uh, zone back, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna work, yeah. Yeah, it's a good change, I guess. I mean, I'm happy for overall for this change. I think it's a very good change. It should be implemented. Do you think that neutral guard breaks are still too strong in 1v1 context? Mm, not that much, honestly. I think uh, that's just a matter of learning the, the playstyle of your enemy, because guard breaks are very strong, yes, but they can be also be very weak if you know how to deal against them. For example, I don't find GBs very annoying in 1v1s. If, you, if I know that someone is going to spam GBs, I can just you know analyze his gameplay, understand when he's going to throw GBs, and I always get punished out of it. Fair it's, enough. Uh, it's just a matter of playstyle, in my opinion. Like, oh, I'm I'm in personally in favor of any change that requires more thinking from players. So yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, Norgos mentions PK PK uh, PK getting her guard break punished nerfed, <laughs> as we mentioned in the previous dojo, <laughs> and now can't GB spam to get those those AC GBs. So it's a real massive PK nerf. Definitely what she yeah. needed. Okay. I mean, I guess, I guess they, they buffed a little bit uh, the recovery cancel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's enough. I think uh, PK needs to be slightly redesigned. Not that much, though. I think the concept is okay. I just think she needs a little bit of redesign. Or if she is not well, that I, mean, I assume she's still solid in ones, right? Or not? She, yeah, she is still very strong. Yeah. She can just like a 4v4, she, like she kind of. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm yeah, trusting no your result on making good work, uh, good reward. I mean, they've been doing a good job recently. Like, at least that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm really happy with what they've been I mean, doing by recently. Recent, by, by recently, I would say from the first three works with JJ Jianhu, I think from that point on, the game just went up in terms of, uh, you know, you know, reworks yeah. and overall changes. Well, that's a good yeah. thing to good good segue there as well to start talking about some of the one of these rework changes. So let's um, scroll up. On the on the web page, and we'll go up one. We'll, we'll start off with TND because we'll go in reverse order. So, Sorry. TND was the first character who has been reworked with it in this. Um, well, the second one on the list. <laughs> um, and the changes are I will just go through them very quickly, but are pretty much is gone from having dodge cancels after the openers to being after every single attack. Um, his palm strike is is no longer a six hundred millisecond back guard break. Punish, it's now a four dodge bash. And the kick now has a dedicated follow-up, which and the kick can also be fainted, so it turns into a high damage mix-up. And finally, um actually I'm not sure of it. Oh yeah, side dodge side dragon dodge was sped up to eight hundred milliseconds from its quite slow one thousand one hundred milliseconds beforehand. So oh and he's been improved some hitbox changes and various other different things. So let's Talk about from the first one. Let's go to the for the first one. What do you think? What do we all think about having the dodge cancels on everything instead of just the openers? And they are slightly slower than they were the openers ones were, which were two hundred milliseconds. They're now three hundred milliseconds. I don't really know how I feel about that, but I do like that they try to make um because I mean at this point they know that everyone's like kind of sick of all the recovery cancels everywhere, so they kind of try to do them a bit slower, right? Just trying to. Not make it feel as annoying. I don't know how I feel about them, but they, yeah, like mm. I like that they're trying different timings, you know, to try and find a happy a middle ground a bit. Yeah, I think it's a lot better than than two hundred. Well, like yeah, that, better, in the, better, in, so annoying. better in the form that it's like more punishable. It's like you know mm -hmm. more fun to fight. Definitely. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Two hundred is kind of too much. Especially with um the the dodge light, the dodge light are actually like such a great peel tool. Like they can punish anything. Like they can punish Shin. They can punish any character really. And plus, you get a CC from them. So if they add like in addition to that two hundred miss recovery cancel, I think that'd be way way too strong. So if they want to make two hundred miss recovery cancels, I think it should be on moves that like that aren't as valuable. 
Because like Pirate having you know 200 MS recovery cancel on her neutral zone has great range, has great peel, it's you know has a great hitbox, and it has it's like um pretty much unpunishable on external because you can just mm -hmm. dodge away and then it's like 200 MS. I think in that case it should be it should be like the move that we look at that should be slower. Okay, so you think cancel. the the sort of blanket recovery cancel changes might need to be sort of looked at more specifically. So if he's like a slow Something like the heavy finishes, for example, which aren't going to be as useful. Two hundred milliseconds might be better to to go for those ones, or just yeah, or like neutral lights. They don't have great range or like a great hitbox, but like they're more poking moves. You know, you can make those two hundred. Yeah, fair enough. What kind of so, Rippy? You mentioned things that you can punish with a three hundred millisecond recovery cancel that you can't really do against a two hundred millisecond recovery cancel. Could you go into a little more detail about the the kinds of things that are go from being, I don't know if they go from being reads yeah. to being... Well, the, uh, the way I meant, and maybe I wasn't clear enough, the way I meant is um, because it's an undodgeable dodge light, right? Mm -hmm. It can literally punish anything in the game, really, and then recovery can out of it. So if it was 200, then it would be, like, pretty much impossible to punish, you know? Like, now you can um, time stuff. I'll give an example, like, um, Pirate, right? They slowed down the side dodge of E, I think, by 33 MS or something like that. I'm not sure, 66, but... 66, but yeah. 66, yeah. Um, and it did have like an effect in one v one, which I expected. Um, but also something I didn't expect is it does affect like Pirate Steam Fight a little bit because before it was really, really, really tough to punish Pirate Dodge Heavy, but now because the move is, itself is slower, it makes it so you're kind of able to try and time attacks in the recovery. It's not super easy to do, and it's still like very safe move. But just like the the move itself being slower, which could have been also the recovery cancel being slower, it has up. It has some um, some timing, so you can like punish the power between our two dodges. So, like with an unblockable as an example, a raider zone is really effective at that. But it does require a lot of uh, practice to to do consistently at all. And you also gotta kind of make yourself free that she's gonna go for a, a side dodge of you. Yeah, rather than chaining into a heavy. Yeah, but just that sixty six ms change like changed a lot for power because now like it happens like I get punished much more out of my side dodge of you than before, even by accident or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. even when it's not meant to be, like, I do get punished more than I, than I was before. Oh, that's interesting. I was under the impression, at least, um, I'm at Anton had your name in the in for Glory for quite a while, which was um, making fun of the change to 600 milliseconds. Do you think that has actually, has your opinion changed on the, on Pirates? Absolutely dodge? not. I still feel like that dodge attacks that cannot punish bashes are something that should be completely removed from the game. Every dodge attack should be able to punish bashes and no reaction I yeah i really? don't like yes oh that's surprising. I, okay I, I mean with the way the game is taking like uh you know more bashes being cancer recoverable like conquer case or like a shinobi uh being able to do a backflip after all after that i feel like uh dodge attacks are getting not weaker but they're getting more uh you know more complicated to land and mm. i also feel like uh not being able to do land uh, damage on basically a reaction uh, implements that you don't take, like for example, Itokiri. I first time I saw Itokiri, uh, new dodge attack uh, from the TG, I said that this character is not going to be even close to be a tier because he doesn't land damage anymore. And the way Itokiri used to land damage against characters like uh, BP and Warlord was doing the dodge attack, you get damage. And even if you uh, make the bad read, you take the heavy, uh, heavy worth of damage, yes, but you don't lose the trade heavily. But in this case, Hitokiri doesn't get that. Uh, does it gets cheap damage, more more or less two or three damage, and uh, she gets uh, like a, uh, she gets punished with a top heavy or like even a you know a side heavy in case of Warlord, which does twenty seven damage. So you basically lose the trade by 25, uh, 24 HP. And uh, Hitokiri is like, why would I go for, uh, for why would I play Tokiri? Uh, that is a character that doesn't punish specials at all, instead of a character that can punish specials consistently. For example, Shaman, and has way better offense overall. Because I like uh, my reads are in, like my reads are rewarded or like my reactions are rewarded. Same thing okay. for Pirate, for example. Right. I think Pirate uh, part nerf was uh, more like a nerf in one once than it was a nerf in teamfights. Because uh, like you could have just nerfed the recoveries and touch attacks, and that would have been enough to fix the character, in my opinion, or just make it so that like um, whenever you have a cancer recovery, your guard disappears, and uh, that pro would have probably also been a change that you you could have done. Because then you have a reason, you have like multiple choices you have to do. Whether you just dodge, but you have no guard, or dodge into dodge attack, 
where you still don't have a guard, but you can still press a button after it with the risk of being hit out of uh, out of it with like an undodgeable or like something, or like chaining too heavy, which you know has a fire armor, so you can try to trade and blah blah blah. But like nerfing the, the speed of the touch attack just made the character weakening one once and uh, still the same for us that don't feel like Parrot is any weaker or stronger than she ever was before. It's Fair just enough. that she feels very, very weak in one once now. So do you think this this in that case the approach with Tiandi was having a three hundred millisecond dodge um recovery cancel and very fast dodge attack, do you think that's a superior approach in terms of making the characters work in one v ones and be Passable in team fights as well. I mean, dodge attack is something that you, you want to use as a defensive mode that can you know translate into an offensive kind of uh, you know read because like you don't you don't use dodge attack, uh, dodge attacks as from neutral as an uh, offense. You want to use them in the middle of mix ups to try to uh, uh, still be offensive but also try to make uh, defensive reads on the enemy. So it's like in one one scenarios, it's kind of complicated to say how good a dodge attack can, has to be. Uh, we had like. Uh, you know, back in the days where Pirate would just be able to trade with the uh, Raider more easily than she's able to do now with the touch attack being the founder MS, uh, you know, founder MS. And uh, I don't know, I think Tiante's touch attack is okay in one once. Like, I don't think he is that big of a problem, but in team fights, it can be quite annoying because of the how fast and how, you know, how consistently can touch cancel into it. So and the, the amount of damage it also does it's uh, kind of a little bit too much for a dodge attack like that. Are we, are we talking in that case? You're talking about his heavy do the dodge heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The heavy dodge attack. I'm talking about the dodge. I think the dodge uh, light's okay though. The dodge light's fine. Okay, well we'll get onto the dodge heavies in a small moment. We've talked about the dodge cancels. Let's talk about palm strike. So palm strike, the input has changed. It's now a forward dodge bash, um, with from a back like a neutral back plus guard break move and instead of having the same follow-ups that it used to do it now can instead of just chain to a top light for example it can chain to all three side lights finishes or heavy finishes instead of chaining directly to the unblock uh, the hyper armored heavy it used to go to afterwards um what are your thoughts on having it as a four dodge bash instead um, i always support this this is this is this is a good thing Whenever you have a a dodge for, especially if it's like a a neutral bash that has the input of back and guard break, you have that. We have that issue with if you're next to a wall, it can kind of bug out the because it's not registering that you're trying to move. So you go for a guard break instead of a neutral bash. So yeah. always moving more of these to a which clearly that's what's happening. Moving more of these to dodge forward guard break input eliminates that issue altogether. And I also believe that, you know, ma matching this with what we were just talking about, the dodge cancel changes, that opens up more opportunities for a TND to use this in a uh, in a team fighting situation to cancel out of recoveries and peel for a teammate. Yeah. Um, Blitz, have you, so you're one of the sort of famed reaction monsters in the game. How did you find the, I guess, the mix up between uh, the forward dodge light, which is undodgeable, and the forward dodge bash? which is a bash, and I guess also the four dodge heavy, which you could feint as well to catch early dodges. Or the only late. character I played in TG was Valk, so you could just keep guard top and back dodge, and that completely negated it. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, sorry, I guess, I guess it does. <laughs> um, do you think that if you were, like, with it, with how did you try to distinguish them on reaction at all? Or nah, how? no reason to. So I just no reason to. always just back dodged. Seemed to work. Fair enough. Anton, did you play any characters that were like playing Shaman in the testing grounds and you couldn't do that? I will just say they brought back the Orochi mix up. So, you know, characters with uh, not a static guard while dodging are going to suffer. Characters with a static dodge while dodging, st uh, static guard while dodging are going to be totally fine against the character. So it's going to be like a matchup situation. So, reflex characters are going to suffer a little bit compared to others because they have to react uh, to the mix up. Well, characters like Raider and uh, you know characters that have the ability to just dodge uh, with their guard still on top are not gonna suffer at all. But for example, BP is gonna suffer since he has uh, he's got uh, dodging, he's moving with while he's dodging. So yeah, it's all yeah. about the character. I, I guess. Valk actually lost her guard on back dodge after uh, the during the after the window. She has like two hundred milliseconds, doesn't it? Go well, I mean, on on side dodge, it's still the the reflex guard. It still like goes away, but for some reason in the testing grounds on back dodge, it's a uh, static guard. 
Huh. Oh, that's oh, interesting. No I did not know that. Um, because, yeah, in live, she doesn't have guard on back dodge. So yep. they sort of buffed Val Valkyrie's back dodges. Well, that's a weird one. That I didn't. She also had uh, diagonal back dodges. Oh, okay. So that's... Damn, all right, well, we'll get on to some... There was definitely some Valk weirdness, which we'll get on to when we, get, when we discuss Valk, I guess. But do you think if, um, for example, if the changes got... If some changes got made so all characters had their guards disappear on back dodges and moved their guard direction in the dodge direction, do you think that would make this a viable offensive mix-up? Yeah. It requires okay. testing, probably. I mean, I remember yeah. people struggling against the dodge light of, uh, and kick of Rochi. And, yeah. uh, do you think... So Lycan's in chat saying, do you think that uh, thinks that the, the dodge bash mix-up might be too safe because he's got omnidirectional 400 millisecond chain light follow-ups? Um, um, before we get to that, can I ask something real quick about the dodging? Because there's one difference between keyboard and, uh, and controller. Because mouse and keyboard with reflex guard characters, if you dodge, you automatically refresh your guard. Controller doesn't do that. Which one should be the standard? Because that, I mean, has a little bit of influence there, externally dodging away from it. I mean, it's actually a slight negative to have that in some scenarios, because it means you it means you have that buffered 100 milliseconds. Yeah, guard. but I see so many people survive because of that. Happens so often, especially ever since Shaolin got so prevalent. It, it's so noticeable on him. Interesting. I mean, I, think I don't know, I just want to know what, I mean, they, they all play with, most of you guys, I think, play mouse keyboard, so I, I just want to know what a, if there's any preference, especially in terms of, I mean, with mix-ups like that, that we're now discussing, so I thought it was interesting. I think we'd have to get into individual scenarios because I think it's going to be situational depending on what's going on. Yeah, I thought you could still buffer. You could still buffer a guard switch if you. It doesn't just. Or it doesn't automatically come back up, but you can still buffer. It does automatically. Switch. Yeah. Yeah, so if anything, the the way it works on controls is better because you don't have a force guard switch you don't want. Um, even if you could sometimes benefit from having an accidental guard switch, which gives you a block when you need it, um, it can also disadvantage you because it means you can't... For example, if you're playing on controller, uh, you can dodge multiple heavies in a row on some characters, whereas if you're on mouse and keyboard, you can't, you can, you can't dodge um, chain heavies after... After dodging one of them, for example, I think I definitely remember that on Nusha, an example of Nusha and Warlord. It's a bit, a bit of a niche thing, but people not having control when you want to have control is probably a bad thing. Um, well, fair enough, fair enough. Honestly, I've been uh, I've I'm been familiar with the mechanic for a while, but I've never got my finger on what exactly it was that's different. Uh, I've never really noticed the difference between keyboard and controller, but now that you that you're actually talking about it, I realize what it is that I've been doing subconsciously often, uh, and that's dodging into an attack. Uh, like for example, with uh, Tiandi, you would be able to just easily just dodge and press light without actually having to move in a direction. And I feel like in niche scenarios like that, that's that could be an upside. Uh, now I'm not a comp player. I don't. I'm not sure exactly uh, how you could make proper use of that. But I, personally, for me, for the for the few times it's actually well, it's not really saved relevant me, on for the, sorry, sorry, for the few times it saved me, um, I feel like it's it's more of a benefit for me. I'm really used to the mechanic. Okay. Um, all right. Anyway, let's move on from... So yeah, so what I was, like was asking is, do you think the bash is too safe? Um, so it has these very fast follow-up lights, which makes it very hard to dodge and then parry them. But and it has crush encounters on the on the on the dodge is afterwards, but it has this longer dodge recovery than um, Orochi's kick did, for example. So do you think um, either any of you guys here think that's it's too safe? Uh, I don't you still know. block most sorry, dodge attacks though. Pardon, sorry. Can't you still block most dodge attacks if they like reaction dodge the bash? Can't you still like dodge into the dodge attack and block it since his guard moves his dodge? Um, I don't know. I, well, I didn't have a chance. To, uh, my reactions are pretty terrible, and um, I just wondering if you can do that it's with the three hundred millisecond guard switch, uh, with the three hundred millisecond dodge cancel. De depending sure. on the character, that's usually the case. Okay. Probably not so, on prediction dodge, but maybe on reaction. Dodge. Yeah, when we did some testing freeze, we found that you it was you could punish it with early dodges, um, quite quite yes. a lot. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes, I was. What is the other guy's dodge attack? What's the timing there? When did they dodge? 
all that kind of stuff. Yeah, was it the kick? Was it the bash? The the, the palm strike? Oh, that was a difference depending on character. You'd have to test every single character with both scenarios depending on the on the dodge attack. So might be able on, on on a lot, but not everybody, I guess. Yeah, sorry. Let's... Can he just? I, I saw your video when you were like crushing countering the dodge attack. I'm, I'm just talking about like blocking them. Um, I don't remember. I, I don't think we tested that, so... I mean... I mean, I unless he's super early dodge, if you, like, dodge in the direction you dodge, you're gonna... Blo I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but... Unless he, like, dodges so early, you're always gonna be able to... At least dodge and block it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like and say that some of the dodge attacks can be caught by the follow-up light as well. Yeah. It, I guess this is an a disadvantage of only having one week with the testing grounds. We don't get to do as much in-depth testing as we, as we might want to do. Um... I know personally I was away for the, mm -hmm. for most of it, so I didn't get to do as much testing as I would like to. I'll say I don't I don't really feel like um TND needs recovery cancel on this bash anyway. I feel like it could be like more of a maybe a confirmed tool, like an interrupt tool or whatever, but like in terms of being safe and stuff, he already has plenty of stuff they can use, so I don't feel like a, don't feel like he you really needs the dodge. That's just my opinion though, but don't feel like the character should be around like uh, throwing a bash and then uh, just blocking anything uh, that's coming his way or whatever with a dodge. Like, even even though it is punishable, like I don't I don't feel like he really needs them to be a good character. Fair, 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 fair enough. Um, well, let's. Um, I guess we'll just one quick thing. Do we have any thoughts on the changing of the 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 four dodge heavy, which used to be buffered after it with the with the, with the regular heavy? Do you, do you prefer using the side? The side attacks, right? Or didn't really get a chance to think about that. Well, it's it's unfortunate you don't have armor anymore, but yeah, you you get to use side attacks now, so that's that's a good for a bad, you know. I don't really have it. Mm. And you can dodge cancel into the the um the uh, forward dodge heavy, so you can still and use hyper armor. The, the armor the armor on that is so bad, like it's never going to be useful, basically. Fair enough. So that was actually one of the other changes which we'll. I guess we can talk about now. We're gonna we'll, we'll go to talk about the dragon dodges. Uh, on the four dragon dodge, the input got moved quite a lot later. On the side dragon dodges, the input stayed the same, two hundred milliseconds, but they got sped up to eight hundred milliseconds. So, what are people's thoughts on the side dragon dodges in particular? Too powerful. Too much damage. Yeah. The side the side attacks. Twenty five damage. Mm mm. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think that the damage is an easy tweak. It's I think, crazy. I think with the there's going to be an annoyance as well with the being able to side dodge heavy, and also, I mean, you could recovery cancel it before, but now it's basically you just kind of see enhanced PV. Just people just mm -hmm. kind of spam it. It's literally what it looks like. It looks like the POV video. He looks like he's in super speed whenever he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and without did you have a chance to, to what do you what are your thoughts on the dodge heavies? Do what? No, I just asked if Anton had any thoughts on the dodge heavies. I mean, I think I already. Uh, oh yeah, you did already. You start you, did, you start talking about them, so I guess I'm looping you back into. Well, I I can just say they're damage too much. I think uh, it should have either like a slower recovery cancel. Or uh, the overall, um, I don't know, maybe just, I don't know, because I don't want to remove the fact that he can soft faint uh, into another dodge, uh, dodge heavy, because he can do that, right? I, I didn't play a lot of games, yeah, but yeah. I remember he can do that. I don't want to remove it, but at the same time, I don't want the character to just be able to be, uh, like, you know, uh, you know, completely safe character in most scenarios, not in every scenario, because the dodge still, you know, can melt him. Like uh, some characters don't have enough, uh, you know, enough uh, tracking with their uh, maybe or sighted boxes with their heavies, uh, and probably you know lack the the timing to punish him consistently. And uh, yeah, I certainly felt that when I played Valkyrie that she was really struggling yeah. with the finisher mix up against Tiendis because you couldn't faint into Garbrake to catch them because it had too low Garbrake vulnerability. I think I measured yeah. it was 500 milliseconds Garbrake vulnerability. Yeah, because I feel but, like uh, you, we either yeah. do a solution like Gigi's uh, dodge heavy, where like uh, it's very slow but he has a lot of uh, dodge frames or high frames, I don't know, maybe they can make it even high frames so they make it more unique. But uh, like this is definitely not going to be healthy for the game. 
or like for the sake of like team fights and things like that, because we're gonna have an oppressive dodge attack a character that cannot be punished by unless you have untouchable properties. Yeah, I'm unsure yeah. why they even did it to be honest. Well, what That's the thought the... behind it? Well, why why speed it up at all? What's the what's the point of that thing now? If you have the dodge light already, why why you need a fast dodge heavy? I mean, I guess they want to experiment with something. Yeah. I mean, um, but it's, well, it's okay if they want to experiment on TGs, honestly. Like, I'm okay with that. If they want to experiment on a live game, it's kind of different. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. The description states that their intent is that it's difficult to use the dodge heavy as, as a counterattack, and they're wanting to, that to be used more effectively as a as a counterattack. So, yeah, but it's already really good as a spacing tool in teamfights. Yeah, well, I'd rather it just was... I personally, I, I mean, I like the, I like using the dodge lights as a counterattack. Um, they could be made yeah. a little bit easier with increasing the input window on them. It's quite short still. It's quite hard to delay them. Although they did increase that slightly, they increased it by one hundred milliseconds. Um, and I thought I was doing better a job of delaying my dodge lights, but actually I was just making. Uh, then I measured the we freeze measured the uh, window and found out that I wasn't being any better at delaying it. Just they made it a little bit easier, just not as easy as it should be. Um, so I thought if they made them to about 400 milliseconds, uh, 100 to 400 milliseconds delay window, that'd be the same as Berserkers, and it'll be a lot easier to to use the dodge lights as punishes, which will then allow the dodge heavy to remain as this interesting spacing tool. Um, personally, I would like it to have the same, everything the same as JJ's, which is to say the same iframes, the same input window, 300 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds into a dodge, the same extremely large GB vulnerability, which is even, it's even bigger than Tiandi's <laughs> on the live game, which is 600 milliseconds, and JJ's is 700 at the slowest, um, at the fastest even. So that's personally what I would like, because I, I liked the very slow ballerina, um, piao piao, whatever it is, bouncing <laughs> around. The yeah, but I mean, because he's still feeling floaty, and when you look at it, he seems like still skating over the floor, so... Even if the, the slow dodge attack even, like, I don't know, enforces that even more. So I, I wouldn't mind, like I'm like not. you just said. Is, is, is everybody else hearing freeze, or is it just... Yes. Yeah. Wait a second, I might have unplugged my headphones or something. Wait a second. See to me again. No, let's see. Okay, yeah, no, I must have just unplugged my headphones slightly. <laughs> I was seeing, I was seeing the green things go, and I was like, "Wait, why am I not hearing anything?" Uh, great hosting there. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> well, I'm, I'll just assume you said something very insightful. Um, yes, I was basically just making another point for you because he feels very floaty already, and he like skates around. So even the slow dodge heavies, when he feels even more floaty, I think it's totally fine. So animation-wise, it's no problem. We're used to it. That's what basically what I'm getting at. Uh, did they yeah. ever change his problem of his zone being like completely GB vuln on external? No, they didn't change it. They didn't change it. Did they pretend that doesn't exist? <laughs> oh dear, yeah. I mean, I've, I've reported that a bug report multiple times, um, and it hasn't got changed. I, I thought they did the same thing with Shimp. Do the same you, thing with Shimp. I'm asking. I think you can do the same thing with Shinobi's uh, zone. Can't you can GB if they fame, but if they let go, the GB goes through, basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, Tiandi's the GB gets um. Gets yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Tiandi's like uh, GB vulnerability got. Uh, yeah, like... Tiandi. Even if he lets go, Tiandi always gets GB. Which it should be more like Shin. You know, either let go and be the GB, or faints and get GB. You know, and it's how it should be. I think. Yeah, I don't think it's any a character a... should be even fucking named with Shinobi. I want that character <laughs> removed. Well, that's uh, fair. I'm sorry to that, you know. <laughs> just for anybody who isn't aware of what's going on with Tiendi's zone currently, it, after the first hit of the zone and before the final hit, is Garby vulnerable all the way up to the very end. You can actually even trade with somebody with a guard break on the very last frame. If you guard break them the same frame as it hits you, um, you will guard break the attack as it lands. It's fully guard break vulnerable, which is very very non-standard doesn't have like 600 msgb vuln or something crazy 900 milliseconds it's 900 it's, it's from it? when the Jesus. first attack hits until that the second kind of good man i don't know kind of good <laughs> game. i'm a fan yeah, i've been the victim of that many a time <laughs> yeah i mean currently actually you can if you what you're saying with like shinobi is where you can guard break the faint recovery if you faint tiendi zone you can you can counter guard break so it's the opposite way around um, which I mean, you really you would good. grab the feint too if you're early enough, you know, just if you're yeah, too well, early, early enough. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like you, you do it at a timing where you grab no matter what, you know? Like, uh, yeah. unless you get hit by it. If you get hit by it, it's different, but... Well, we've talked about the zone of TND because that is in, that leads quite neatly into the next question, which is about Dragon Kick, because we know Dragon Kick can be used <laughs> after a zone, uh, after the first hit of a zone, but can also now be used after any heavy openers on hit or miss. It used to only happen on hit or blocked ones. And the Dragon Kick also got changed to now have a confirmed follow-up attack, which did 26 damage, if I remember correctly. Um, a bit like um, Eagle's Talons, except it didn't pin the opponent when they were hit by it. They could recover very quickly afterwards. Um, what do people think of that kick mix-up? Uh, so either make it 26 damage, but at least punishable with dodge attack, or makes it make it recover consolable, but not 26 damage, because that is... Pick one yeah. or the other, you know? It's nice that the a... move is usable, but 26 damage, I don't know about that. I mean, 26 damage is fine if you can somehow punish it, right? At least that's my opinion, right? I don't mind getting hit by 26 damage if I can get, like, a dodge attack out of it, you know? But if I gotta, like, make her read... If I gotta make her read to dodge a 26 damage uh, punish and then make him read to punish it, that's that's a bit too much. Yeah. Um, it was, was your, so, basically, the mix-up currently was between... A faint to guard break, which would catch, and um, the kick itself doing 20, so basically 26 or 20, 24 damage um, on the guard break punish. Um, and of course, if you try to dodge attack it, you could recover and cancel the kick and avoid the dodge attacks quite a lot of time. So I guess the options are making the kick less safe, um, which, as you mentioned, Rippy, or the other options are changing how the mix up works, because currently the kick mix up. Uh, only you faint to, and they remove the dodge cancel on it. In, in live, you can soft faint them into a dodge, and you can use the forward dodge light, um, or even the side dodge lights if they aren't back dodging, um, to catch. So, would you be happy with the mix up if it were they no, remove the hard face? The, the the mix up actually doesn't work because if you keep your guard top and back dodge, most of the time yeah. the side dodge light will whiff. Um, so static guard can counter it. Something you could do now though is probably a car cancel into. A four dodge bash, right? And I assume it's yeah. gonna track side dodge. That, that would, could be that, like that would be yeah. that. That could be like the new mix up or something. Um, I'll say like I, would... I, Sorry. what I would do personally, I would keep the um, the mix up like he is right now, right? And just give like a free dodge attack every time you dodge it, you know. And then obviously you can counter GB if they they dodge and try to GB you. Yeah, cause... but what kind of dodge attack though? Because you know we have like, yeah, well, touch attacks. yeah, I mean. All the like somewhat fast dodge attacks, you know. Maybe you won't get a uh, like slow ass uh, Griffin dodge attack, you know. But no, but that's not fair, though, in my opinion. Because it, why would it, it is? But that, that's a problem with the dodge attack itself, not a problem with the, the mix up. If you get what I mean. <laughs> Dang. Good yeah. Griffin, man. Would you, would you if they did um, change it guards so that you didn't have guards on back dodges, for example, anymore? Would then you be happy with it being an under yeah, that... like, the under line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be fine with that. Okay. Well, interesting that these changes. There's a, you know a few places in TND's. Well, I guess it sort of talks. It talks about um, what what they need to change for court. They they're doing a character testing ground, but a couple of mix-ups that TND's meant to have or had in the in the past are problematic because of a, of a core gameplay issue, which is where you can guard. You can pick your guard when you back dodge if you have a static guard character. Um, so I guess that's like, should they fix that core issue, and in order to fix the TND, TND mix-ups? Shrug. I mean, yeah, it's obviously simpler to just change the mix-up rather than change the entire mechanic. But it might be better for the game, honestly, if the guard doesn't stay. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure what I think about that, but. Might not see be better for the game if your guard disappears for a bit when you dodge or, or something around that. Maybe only on back dodge, I don't know, you know, like, there, there's room to experiment and I think it might make the game better, uh, possibly. I don't know what Anton or Blitz or whoever thinks about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, it's kind of complicated to think about it because... Because, yeah, like, like, what... Sorry, but I was about to say, if you bring it to team fight, you know, then it would be pretty annoying that every time yeah. you dodge, you get hit by stuff, so... You gotta I think, think that would like be a little multiple bit and, like yeah, only yeah. ones are not like that important overall. But like you have to yeah, consider like, like, like maybe a, a mix-up on... mix being too weak. It's not a mix-up, mm -hmm. but a mix-up being like you know 
good because you had to nerf something uh, the correlates mm-hmm. to fluid force, something that I wouldn't fucking I wouldn't like uh, process uh, even in my mind. But like I feel like the way Tiranda works is like uh, you have frontier mass chain lights which are very good. You have a non-reactable kick which is in my opinion very strong tool to capitalize. Uh, the fact that you cannot use your, uh, you know, dodge light into bash mix-up is can be correlated to some characters in the roster, not to every character in the roster, which is, in my opinion, it's, uh, uh, it's an annoying, yes, but I don't think can, it's, you know, something that needs to be fixed uh, or, like, needs to be, uh, mm-hmm. it's, like, main priority to fix, because at, this, at that point, I can also say, uh, I can back to the topic of dodge attacks, I want to have all characters being able to punish bashes or reaction. And uh, then will be a loop of uh, you know being every character being uh, uh, too weak because they don't have this and some character having it blah 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 blah. blah, blah. So yeah, I yeah, I would definitely agree with uh, what you're saying right now. Um, what about the new dodge decks? A bit off topic, but are these dodge are these dodge decks are too slow, right? To punish on reaction. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, again, it's like. Warlord or Black Briar, you can't really do much. Like, I, I oh, don't personally in mind, but I'm also not a 1C player. I know, like, it can be annoying when you... I don't know, I feel, like, and don't get anything. I feel like, especially because of dodge lights, I think uh, that's more of, a, like, a reason of having them being able to punish uh, bashes. Because, like, the, you first of all, you have a dodge light as a, as a dodge attack, which means every every time you fuck up, you get, you, uh, you get like, a heavy worth of damage as a parry. Yeah. Um, and it's not like a character like Pirate or Shaman or Raramusha, like blah blah blah. I mean, Ra- Raider, Raiders be, I don't know, Raiders are kind of okay with him having a dodge light. Um, uh, like I don't really mind it because overall his damage is high, very high, and his dodge attack is more like a, a punish bashes thing. And uh, mm-hmm. but like then you have characters like Pirate that use their dodge attack used to be able to use their dodge attack as an space out move and as a punish mm-hmm. move. Uh, but now Pirates, since they slowed it down for another reason, uh, cannot do it anymore. But then you have uh, still characters like um, Shaman that can use it to sp- <laughs> more yeah. like quote-unquote right. space out, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah. I guess. Well, well, this is definitely something in that case that we that needs to be mentioned, needs to be talked about. The, I guess the info windows on dodge attacks and making they're not they're just not equal in their ability to punish things. But talking of dodge attacks, there's uh, Kintama, or, or also known as. I actually can't remember. Sweating Intama is down there in chat saying, what do you think about if we made Dragon Dodge, so Tandy's Dragon Dodge, slow, like like it is in live, but unblockable? Does that make people cringe? Or it does. Like it? could be quite fun? Uh, no, it doesn't sound fun to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we would have it the same as Warmonger, right? But yeah, it is like, non-stop well, unblockable because you can you know? faint it in, like you can loop it. And you basically have a non-stop orange indicator until and, the TND runs out of stamina, right? Yeah, but you also got to consider Warmonger as, like, bad eye frame. It's slow, you know, <laughs> probably very reactable, if I had to say. No, she doesn't bring much, you know, like, uh, our dodge attack's really all not, that, not, not all that great. So it's kind of okay to be unblockable, but, like, TND that gives, like, um, a lot of distance, a lot of positioning, and then that can be soft fainted and that has good eye frames, like, that would be way too much for, for me to have. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. So yeah. I guess consensus is the dragon kick. Uh, we don't want unblockable dodge attacks, even if you could let you get to sort of do the POV meme, but even more. <laughs> so um, dragon kick is currently too powerful. It has too because it's very safe and also very high damage. Um, I just now want to talk about just general thing, your general feeling on the TND rework. Do you think the character is going to be um, going to be have a place in the meta? Do you th- what things specific things do you think still need tweaking on the character? Um, we've talked a little bit about things that are too powerful, so let's not can't re- rehash that ground. Um, we'll just talk about things that need to be fixed or added to the character, and where you think the character can be in the current current meta. We'll start with Blitz. Um, fix the issue on his own attack, definitely. Um, other than that, I think that he has good onesies with unreactable offense. I mean, it might be a little hard to get into, but, I mean, it's still unreactable offense. It's more than a lot of characters have. He has good 2v2s. Two he has good peel, pretty safe. He can move around quite a lot, press a lot of buttons. In 4v4s, he has good feats. I think he has a place, like, in one of the two comps, probably. Fair enough. Who do you think he would replace? In a, who, in who your, do you... in a second comp. 
Probably Conk, probably. Because, like, I think he has just more sustainable, like, feats to keep himself alive to take down, like, the stalling roll that, mm. that Conk had. So, probably Conk, in my opinion. That's very interesting. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about, yeah, using the... Well, I mean, I had thought about his feats great for stalling, but it's interesting that then... Because they... So the characters are so very, very different. Um, but being able to take on Conk's role is quite an interesting one. Yeah, his dodge attack, the way they were buff they the way they buffed it made it extremely strong just to get away from people and keep using it, so he can space pretty easily like that and anti ink pretty decently. Yeah. Install for um, a while. Anton, do you have any thoughts about where the character might end up? I will say that I am very ignorant about this topic because I didn't play the character a lot. I was more focused on Valkyrie since I uh, preferred Valkyrie work more. So I will not say anything about it because I am not the person to ask for, for now. I will, uh, I, 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 will def I will definitely try him more after the uh, reward comes out. Like, but I like I, I have to say this real quick because I'm gonna have to go. Um, yeah. Valkyrie is definitely in the meta. Maybe even like a. Uh, Team one character, in my opinion, maybe, uh, but again, I have to explain much more. So yeah, fair enough. Well, good yes. luck with your tournament, by the way. Yes. Yeah, good luck, man. Yeah, I have to stay awake until six again. You pee. <laughs> good <laughs> try, man. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah, that pizza money. Like, All right. Later then. Well, before we move on to Valkyrie, just want to say if, if anybody else has any finishing thoughts on um, on Candy Freeze or Norgos. Yeah, or yeah I want to see the the feet snuffed. It's, I think the tier four is absurd. Yeah. I mean, with, with with pirate, nobody picked it. Like it was like, yeah, you could pick it, but I mean, the big fucking cannon is more fun, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the problem yep. wasn't as exacerbated. But with Chandy, you're gonna pick it. Everybody's gonna run that shit, except mm -hmm. for maybe. Wait, wait, does he have last laugh? Right? So yeah, Spandy, they're gonna yeah, run that. Last 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 I mean, yeah, that, that <laughs> thing is, uh, needs to get nerfed. No, well. But I think it's gonna be a huge fucking problem. Not maybe not comp wise, but at least normal matchmaking. As long as that shit triggers, gets reset by the tier 3 all the time, right. TMDs in matchmaking are going to have like shields out the fucking ass. Is that just Revenge because of bug the right? Revenge yeah. bug makes it more... <laughs> Without Revenge bug, would it not be a problem? I think it would be fine. I think then it would be fine, yes. What's more but up, even, I mean, even in comp, it's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to have the fucking non-stop shield there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I did, I did try the same feed on Pirate, you know, for a couple, like a couple, I think a game or two in Scrim, and it was definitely good, but didn't feel as powerful as just running it on TND because you don't have the, the heal that resets your shield. After exactly, that. it's a resetting. Right. That's so, a... so it's, I, I think it's more probably of a T3 problem or out of T4 and tracks with the T3. So maybe, like, make it so um you can only use. I'm saying just ban the revenge bug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the revenge yeah, no, bug really we, doesn't, we could, doesn't change uh... that far. Really. Okay, fair enough. And but, um, I was going to say something before um, Rory P had a What, oh, you, what sorry, was your sorry. thought about it? No, sorry, no, just... Hmm? You, oh, you had um, something you were saying. What's more optimal, Rally Call or uh, freaking Come At Me? Because I know Come At Me is something not a lot of people talk about, is that when you kill somebody with it, you basically get a Bounty Hunter proc of 20 health, which seems very mm -hmm. good on Tiandi, where you just keep yourself alive all the time, and if you... You know, you just pop come at me on somebody, and then you kill them, and then you get the health for it. Yeah, but you do have to land the killing blow, and you make yourself take twenty five percent more damage. So I don't think yeah, overall but it's... it makes it. But I think that's that. That's part of like the skill that comes into the feat. You only use it yeah. when somebody's lower. You're about to win the fight. Oh, fair enough. I mean, I think yeah, I'll give my opinion on well. that. I'm a bit biased, but I think uh, come at me is a thing that gives you more renown, right? Yeah, yeah, it's more renowned. Yeah, I, I run that over anything because you get your feet so quick and then you get to just go mm -hmm. stall for the rest of the game. Like, I would run that every game, I think, to be honest. Yeah, I think. Because, like, the thing with that feet is even if you die with it, you're still going to be able to get, like, stuff from it, right? Like, you, you get it, you pop it while you're healing, then you go clear mid, then it's still on for forever, and then, like, you just mm -hmm. got, like, a, your T2 in one pop of come at me. Like, just healing, boosting the point, clearing the entire minion lane. Then have to take a single fight and then boom, you got T two. Then someone comes in, even if you lose the fight. And that's where like Blitz said, you know, it depends a bit on the scale. Sure, if like you eat every attack, you're gonna die really fast. But even with that um that that lesser defense, you know, even if you take more damage, you're still able to um survive and help your team, right? And even if you end up losing that fight, now you're at T two. Next time you pop come at me, you're gonna be almost at T three, you know? And then when you get that T three, you can already go for the stalls because 
you don't need that T4 to get the crazy heal from everything you land, so... Mm. I, I'm oh. giving my opinion here, but I think Comet Me is definitely the best T1 you can run on TND. Even, I mean, even that, on a Warden, probably, to be honest. This is, I mean, this is interesting to me. I, 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 I completely understand your argument, and I agree with it as well. But it'll make it, it'll be very interesting to see how that would affect... I, would, I want to see Tiandi come into the meta just so that people can play around that, because that that combination of using uh, uh, come at me and then then having the having the very strong stalls could be you know it's something it's something you even design your team uh, strategy around. You know you have to you pop you let your your Tiandi pop come at you and then you have to confirm so he can get the kill, for example, in a team fight, and then use the stalling that way. So I don't know. But again, like I said, you know, like I don't see it as much as you use it to um in team fights. You mostly use it whenever you have time to do to get renowned without having to fight an enemy, right? And then when yeah. you have to fight an enemy, you do your best to to play around it. And yeah, if you get like the last blow or something, even just a contesting renown, like it 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 helps that too. You know, it helps everything ever renown gain. So. Really I think useful. you use it when you're about to win the team fight. Like you're for sure gonna win. Your entire yeah. team is like three bars or more, and the enemy team is on like you know a because single. Because you get a renown from the fight, the yeah, renown for the heal. point capture, the renown from the boost while healing, then the renown from clearing mid, and that you just got like hundred renown with all that probably more. That's you know from a number standpoint, and I also don't use that one very much either. But if you look at it from a number standpoint, it's uh, about a thirty second. Uh, use you've got 45 seconds cooldown. I mean, you've got a substantial amount of of uptime for an uh, oh for yeah, a, yeah. Uh, really for an ability awesome. like that. So, yeah, I can definitely see the benefit in that. Yeah, so oh, exactly uh, right then. and then with you also get something. Uh, sorry, sorry to cut you. Just want to have that because it's also important. Um, the T4 something you got to consider with the T4 with TND is it's it's not like a bomb, right? It's not something. It's not like um. Power T4, you know, where like you just put everyone on the ground. It's not like a fire flask. It's not like a 10 second shield, you know. Ah. So to to have any use out of it, you need to get it somewhat early, which come at me home because if you only get it from the last fight, all you're gonna get from it is like 25 additional HP, right? Plus plus your yeah. own healing, but you won't have a lot of impact. Well, if you have it like halfway through the game or like um when it's 700 700, you're gonna. You're gonna, you're gonna get so much impact from just going under point over and over and stalling and being unkillable in the game, being unkillable in every team fight. Even once it's gonna be like super hard to kill you down. And if you add that to every fight you're taking, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be so useful. That's why Comet Me really helps too, because you're gonna get so much earlier than a, without a T1. Well, like I said, I'm I'm keen to see Comet Me used in the meta because it's been a long time since we've had that character. Yeah, for you sure. Me, you know, and I meta, think you could so. be. Especially yeah. in this meta, which is all about stalling the enemy point point gen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that Tiandi has that I don't think any of us has mentioned yet is that Tiandi has uh, like a dozen options from neutral, and they've had that even before this rework. I mean, that's something about this this character that it kind of forces if it can, if you can't react to it, especially like you, it does force players to kind of make a read on on what's going on amongst, you know, dozens of options. You've got your dodge light, dodge heavy, which can now be dodge canceled into something else, into a bash dodge heavy or another dodge light or a side dodge heavy. He's just got a lot of options, not only from neutral, but also from like a, 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 a dodge heavy attack. So it is a very mix up intensive kit. And I believe that if you, especially if you, if it's set up to where you can't react to it, or if you have a, you know, you can put somebody under, under a lot of pressure with all of the tools that he brings to the table. I think that with everything that's going on with the kit, generally speaking, in testing grounds, it brings Tiandi to... Because Tiandi doesn't need a ton of things on live currently to make it to that next level. So I think it's a good decision that they chose Tiandi for this particular rework because a lot of things adjusted in this kit, like the dodge cancels as an exam is, is a big one, is bringing Tiandi to the point where I absolutely believe that it could be meta, whether or not it's on a first or second team you know, remains to be seen. I think Blitz brought out a really good observation with it replacing Conk. I hadn't even thought about that either, and I think that's a, probably a really good spot for him. Well, overall impressions, TND testing ground, I would say pretty positive. The, the big the big thing that nobody's keen on is the dodge heavies. They need to be changed something, and I guess the kick being too powerful and some other issues with dodge, back dodging, negating some mix-ups and those kind of things. Let us move on to the second character 
Um, and as Anton said, probably that he the one the character he found the most fun. Um, we say Freeze. I think also said he found the most fun. We were talking about Valkyrie. Yes. Way more fun. So, yeah, Valkyrie, and I think something that I liked so much about this this rework is something that they we've we've heard a lot of complaints about character reworks being the same as same 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 you know or they just they just add on block or they just add on dodgeballs or make it a bash blue mix up whatever the valkyrie's core mix up which they've changed in this testing ground is replacing her shield crush which is a soft faint to 500 millisecond bash into a so in now it soft faints into shield tackle which is her full block bash uh, full block stance and then the bash off that which is 400 milliseconds and they've increased the damage that it does and they've increased the safety because it now can chain or miss and it's available from a forward dodge, and it's a really unique mix-up, because you have to punish it from a soft feint, is to guard break on prediction. What are people's thoughts about this mix-up, and whether this unique, this approach to make a very unique character is paying off? I think it's definitely paying off. I think um, <clears throat> it's very fun to use, and I think the 20 damage is warranted for just how many options a defender has against it, and how many reads Valk actually has to make. You have the options of um, you can wait and see their dodge and react to their dodge and let it go and use it, but that gets beaten out by a delayed dodge attack. And then if she's waiting and reacting to the dodge, then you can GB it from neutral, or if you think they're just going to dodge and not do a dodge attack, then you can dodge out of it in GB. There's so many options that she has, but the only thing that I don't like is how she can chain into heavy on whiff. I feel like the read should be either you dodge and you do a dodge attack, which is safe, but it guarantees less damage than she does for landing the right read, right? Mm -hmm. Or you dodge and light parry and make the read between you know, GB and her you going for the light attack. I think then you get more damage for like, but you have to take a risk. I think that's that'd be better than chaining to the heavy. It's a little, a little too much. So make it a little bit less safe in in that. Sense. Yeah. If you want more damage than she gets for taking the risk, then you have to make a read on top of that. I mean, you can still, of course, guard break her from you, know, you see see her do the soft faint and you guard break her, or you see her doing a full dodge. And you can't. It's a little bit hard to full dodge from the guard break, but there's just no reason for her to throw the light. You can just always chain to heavy. Okay, so you're saying that when she, when you, I mean, won't that be? Uh, I guess it'll be caught by dodge attacks regardless, right? So, yeah, yeah. It's caught by dodge attacks, but you get less damage than she does. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So, do you think in that case it's not safe enough against dodge attacks? If the mix-up is to use... If you can punish it with a dodge attack, do you think it's better that it's... that you're not... You think you're not going to be engaging with the core mix-up of grabbing it with a guard break? Yeah. I don't think there there's ever a reason to go for that mix-up just because she can chain to heavy. And it's not even that, like... If she faints the heavy, you'll still GB your faint because your GB just always bounces off. Okay. Oh, and she also moves too far usually for you to grab a GB anyways. Oh, I meant um, yeah, that is a weird interaction, isn't it? Sorry, I meant the startup, not the not the um, not the the punishing the bash afterwards. Sorry, I was talking about the mix up as they demonstrate in the Warriors Den where you where to, from a soft faint you guard break, and that will be that will be that will just uh catch the the shield tackle in its startup or you you um but then it will you'll eat a heavy for doing that so yeah no i think that's fine I i'm talking about like the the actual bash itself being chainable to heavy okay so you think the what i'm saying is do you think the safety of the bash is warranted by how risky you have to go into it from the because if, if you you're if you if you basically wait for the bash to happen you are not engaging with the the risky part of the mix-up, which is to go for the prediction guard breaks. So well, don't you think the bash should be safe? Yeah, it's a risk for her to go for it, but it's also a risk to make that read in the first place, because you could just end up eating a heavy for it. And I think she already gets 20 damage, so I think that's enough compensation for the, for the risk. Okay, fair enough. Um, Rippy, do you have any thoughts on, on Valk? I'll be team. honest, I played two games of Valk and I went zero twenty thousand every time, so <laughs> Well uh, well I 
I know freeze. But I'll, I'll, I'll say like um, I, I kind of disagree. I don't like the twenty damage bash. I understand the reasoning. I I don't like it. It could be eye damage. I would be fine with that, but not twenty. <laughs> I, I don't funny. like the 20 damage bash. It's really funny because everybody at the beginning was like, no, that's too much. But the more you play her, the more it's like, no, it makes sense. It makes sense yeah, that it's so hard. I mean, it's, it's, really player, weird. it's really weird so... because everybody I talk to have the same reaction at the beginning as 20 is way too much. It's way too much. But the more you play, it's it's really funny. Uh, I'm yeah. curious. Just, just talk to us again when you when you play it a little because I think you, you'll come uh, around. I, think I, you'll I, come I, around. I don't think I'll play a player, so... <laughs> Um, just yeah. guess that won't change, but yeah, maybe maybe I, I just didn't play her enough to understand her. To understand yeah, when I was playing against her, I mean, you 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 have to sort of, it's very uh, character specific mix up to go to go for. You see someone throwing a heavy, and you go for a guard break on on reaction to the heavy is kind of a a nutty thing to do, but it felt very very satisfying when it worked. So yeah, I, I, it's I, one of the I, things I, not I, not nearly enough people do yet, but. The read of, of like grabbing that because I mean we still do it sometimes trying to get the like the faint recovery right yeah but uh, it, it, that happens very rarely very rarely but with Valk it actually bam you got you got the GB it feels very rewarding just like Spani just said yeah it's like one of, I guess it's similar to uh, the how satisfying is a light parry storming tap from from uh, you know on a read just it's nice it's a big damage punish you get um i guess the question is if that is the how the mix-up is meant to be conceived as well you have to guard break into her bashes to get enough or to guard break into the heavies enough to get enough damage do you think that is potentially too powerful in a team fight scenario where guard breaks themselves are very vulnerable and if you guard break an opponent you're actually often more like to damage yourself than you are to land damage uh, because the way it works is if you go for that mix up in a team fight, um, tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly certain that if you go for that mix up in a team fight as a Valkyrie, you're gonna get punished. Like it's it's easy for the the one you aren't mixing up to punish you with a high damage. So you, you need to be really punish, careful yeah. about when you use it um, in a team mm -hmm. fight. So I don't think it makes it too powerful. It's balanced out by the fact that landing the bash itself is quite risky because you've only can you can only follow up into the top top light yeah. can you um just side dodge away from that the mix up i assume that works or does that have enough i think the back yeah, that works tracking, that, 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 that bass tracks okay okay yeah, you, can also... really... oh, you, guys, good. you can also um dodge back into full block so if you think they're just going to keep external dodging away from you if you just double do like double full block then that will catch another external dodge. Uh, i like that i actually like that a lot mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, it did feel a lot of fun to dodge it and then go back into the full block as well. So yes. that's actually, that's the other thing that she obviously can do it from a forward dodge now. She can't do it from a back dodge anymore, which I guess is required because you can now dodge out the full block. And I remember you used to be able to dodge out the full block when it was a on back dodge. And that was, uh, I want to say AIDS. It was absolutely horrible to play against <laughs> back in the day before season six when she had her first rework. So I'm glad they haven't. They've removed it from the back dodge, and they've only got it on the forward dodge. What do you think of the mix-up from forward dodge versus the soft faint? Um, and do you think which one would you be using more in a fight, Blitz? Um, probably it will in a, in a team fight definitely the dodge forward one because GBs are very risky in team fights. Um, you you have a lot of teammates to peel, a lot of stuff going on, you know. Uh, so I definitely the dodge one in team fights in one v ones. I'd still use the dodge one, but with now with like the the GB changes, I also like if I you know get counter guard broken, then I just use a heavy into all block and then it's fine. Use that, so I don't get GB spam. All right. Um, but overall perceptions of the the new mix up is are very positive. I would say. Yeah. It seems to me like it's it's basically Shaolin's mix up from cheese stance just with less steps to get into it and it has a bit more defense that's what it felt like going against it i never played her myself but that's what it feels like to me i don't have a problem with it it wouldn't seems say like so a nice change. just because she can dodge out and gbu shaolin can't well it's similar it's not quite the same it's just with the whole I mean, even, even know, the follow-up is different the options you have out of it after landing it everything's different yeah, I would have to be that similar to the thing that the part of her moveset which is similar to or more similar to the Shaolin mix up is the spear sweep. 
um, which is was sped up to be 500 milliseconds. Uh, now that was I give us guys. Do you notice that segue that I was I was going for there? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Shep. <laughs> so. Oh, well, that's what I was referring to. Was yeah, the, exactly. Was the sweet... <laughs> okay, okay, so you're referring to, you're referring to the, sweet, the sweet mix up. But fair enough. So mm-hmm. we've talked about the sit bits. We talked about the shield tackle mix up, and now her. I guess the reward for getting to her end of the chains is a spear sweep mix up. So it now no longer unbalances allies. It also doesn't knock down out of any kind of hit stun or interaction that it used to do, just knock you down, whatever happened. And instead of being 600 milliseconds and reactable, it is now 500 milliseconds and, in theory, unreactable. It's not mixed up with an undodgeable heavy, um, like, or, or undodgeable light, like Griffin or Shaolin's mix ups are. Um, but it has much lower recoveries than Griffin's Kick and similar chain bash blue mix-ups. So it lacks the blue, but it has the the bash um, with very low recoveries. What are people's thoughts on the sweep mix-up and and the sweep in general? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna I'm gonna nominate Blitz to to start. <laughs> um, recovery is definitely way way too strong. It's the even on most prediction dodges, you cannot punish that thing. Um, overall, like it, I don't know, it's just very, very annoying that you can't really catch people's dodges. That's uh, that's mm. very annoying. So like, it's very a niche use. But I guess you could just make the read if whether they're gonna GB or not. That's fine. Or maybe you can chain a heavy, and if they dodge attack, then you just go into all block or something. I think there's options out of it. So overall, I think it's fine. But I think the recovery is way, way too good on it. Yeah. Also, I'd like it to be... I don't know. Because I, I don't like it being 500, because that means at the top level of play, everybody's just going to dodge this on reactions. It's going to be another chain bash. Well, you think that now the it's 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 similar enough to or too distinct enough that you're going to be able to re- dodge that on reaction? Yeah. Oh, shame. Um, <laughs> I think it had a close enough animation to the chain heavies, at least the startup. It'd be quite difficult to distinguish, or is that just? I'll because... say that's more of a five hundred MS bash problem than really the rework in itself. You know, being a problem. Yeah. Um, if you want to like um remove the the reaction, you know, on the bashes, you need to add I mean, some. Maybe uh, I don't know some. Uh, you, you need to start to to change all the five hundred MS bashes. You know, with something maybe... like uh, to make them less reactable. Maybe change the chain link to be a little later, but make it like 466 would definitely, definitely help. Yeah, you think it only needs one frame? Um, to make it push well, it to unwrap for everybody. Yeah, there's an argument for that because like Shinobi's, uh, Shinobi's, you know, his chain kick, it's 466. Which, if you only do that and GB, it is reactable. But without the, uh, but with the undodgeable, it's not. I haven't seen anybody do it so. But well, I think I can... 466 is definitely, yeah, probably the better option. Fair enough. I th- I thought was the forward one was, um, the, the forward rock flip kick was actually, oh, no, it is 466. For some reason, I thought it was 433, but yeah, fair enough. Well, I guess in that case, that's what I need to do. <laughs> Make all these f- chain 500 splashes 466 or hide the indicators for a little bit longer. And yeah, and as long as they have an undodgeable, they should be, uh, there should be an actual mix-up then. Yeah. So do you think the Valk needed an undodgeable? Um, maybe. No. <laughs> no, okay. So we've got a maybe, we've got a no, we've got a freeze. Do you, what do you think? I mean, I've been advocating... <clears throat> Jesus. I've been advocating for the blue for a while now. I, it's... Mm-hmm. I think it, it's so annoying. It's so annoying because she can't catch so many things with a feint to GB. And what you're left with then? Feint into neutral all the time. But in theory, you want to get to your later part in your chain because... The sweep is like you want to get there, right? But if you have to constantly feint to neutral, you're not ever gonna get there. So I'm, well, I guess the, I'm if, not a fan of it. So yeah, if you can go if let me catch the... dodge attacks with like in chain moves. Don't force me to nonstop feint to neutral. Do you think you can the the, the ability to feint into the well, you you soft feint into the full block is a, is can make that move a little bit easier. You know, you catch, you can go to the full block, block a dodge attack. Punish it and then you go back into the mix up again, or do you think it's that's possible to catch dodge attacks like that? Yes, mm. but I do you non stop want to faint into that? Then? I, I don't know, I, it's just it's so annoying. I don't know. <laughs> go on, then I don't have opinions. opinions on this. I've I am I too advocate for a blue, and I'll tell you why because 
So I believe that on her finishers, either light or heavy, and both of which have their own pros and cons, I believe that she needs to have an undodgeable property. If you do it on light, it promotes displacement tech. If you do it on heavy, it solves the issue of where you, you have great trajectories with Valkyrie's heavies. They're phenomenal. You can hit people on the side of you that are almost you know slightly behind you looking at the arc. Uh, I couldn't give you the exact uh, degrees, but they're really, really good. The problem is that uh, like uh, I've missed so many dodge attacks that were that I believe that I, I'm like, you know, it just just seems like I should be able to to catch this. And it's it's mm. not. And I believe blue solves that problem on a heavy. However, it the mix up then effectively becomes like uh, kind of like what Blitz was saying before, like if you go into your um, well, th th I'm assuming like you go into so you're it's only on, on finisher. So you land your bash, you get your light. And then you throw your, it's the mix up. If it comes, okay, are they gonna? Is, is my opponent gonna sweep? Am I gonna try and dodge it, or or not? And if you have a bash or a sweep, something like that, that forces a mix up. Essentially, you you need to give incentive to do one or the other, uh, or and and so if you go for a sweep, obviously you're gonna get some damage. If you dodge the sweep, there needs to be some type of an incentive for you to throw something out there to punish your opponent and without blue on either of those attacks you don't really have a lot of options you're not going to catch them so i think that those are going to be the reason i would advocate for blue and alternatively if you're going to give and this might even be I, i'm sure that, that this might be argued as maybe potentially too much but if you give lights blues i would be potentially open to have a discussion about having heavies as uh hyper armored the reason being is that it allows her the option of training of chaining uh, in team fights, giving you some openers, she doesn't have any real orange other than bash. So I say let her swing. Fair enough. I mean, I think uh, you'd we'd have we definitely run into issues. People complaining about similarities if you made the heavy heavies mm -hmm. hyper armored and the lights on dodgeable, and she's got a foam rest bash that does high damage. People would be just going <sighs> Griffin all over again, wouldn't they? Um, well, that's so. enough. Well, I think that's also an advocate in in some regards. That's say okay. Well, you have you know a a number of com of heroes that have similarities to that that yes i understand that you know be like well we don't want it to be too similar to this that or the other thing but when you start having multiple heroes with those options i think in, in some regards you can argue one or the other because it says okay well these heroes have this under what scenario would we say we don't want to have this particular one and it's because and if we don't want to have it for this particular hero it's because it makes it too powerful and i don't know that that's the case fair enough um uh, all right. Well, shall we move on from so we sweep? It doesn't quite work. There's not. I wouldn't say there's a consensus on whether she needs blue because Rippy just thinks Rippy, Rippy said no. Uh, Blitz and Maybe. I just don't think she she um, needs it, man. Like you can make an. I don't know. Like man. there's definitely a way to catch something somewhere. Okay, I haven't played her, and I didn't. You know. Okay. Um, putting aside the reactable side of the, the sweep, you know, like if they're just dodging the sweep, you know, like there's definitely something somewhere to catch it. I I, I won't believe that every option can be avoided until until someone shows it to me. And then maybe yeah, I'll, no. I'll be okay giving her blue lights or something. But until then, you know. Also, if she has blue lights, uh, I don't think she, she still has that thing, right? Where um, her lights like show people on the side mm -hmm. and shit. They do indeed. Yeah, like if she has blue lights, she shouldn't have that in addition. So. Oh, that'd be a shame to um, lose that. I, mean, I, I just don't think she needs any undodgeable right now, is what I'll say. Okay, talking, about, talking about her lights, she did... Uh, well, well, actually, Blitz, wanna, well, let you finish off, Blitz. You, you had something to say about the about the, the maybe. Oh, you could just... I mean, you make an argument that uh, the sweep, its main tool, is either, you know, to be useful in team fights, like target swap it maybe sometimes, or mm -hmm. just use a ganking tool. I mean, I haven't had any problems with it, because all I use is Oblock. I think it's uh, just a better mix-up option, so just use that. Yeah, and well, definitely. Especially if uh, people start reacting to Sweep or whatever, you're just going to use the other one. It's 400, right, the other one? I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so you're just going to use the other one, especially with 20 damage, can, super yeah. safe and stuff right now. Um, and you can faint it 100 milliseconds after you let it go, so it's, it's like, in practice, oh, it's a 300 huge. milliseconds bash. It's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that's actually huge, so... Yeah, like, uh, the Sweep's a great ganking tool, and... Like, I haven't seen it in teamfight, but I'm sure you can confirm massive damage in teamfight with it, too. So, like, not every move needs to be a 1v1 move either. So, another yeah. thing that I didn't think about, but that what was is saying does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Talking of the, uh, how did you find it for gank splits? Because compared to Shaolin Sweep, it doesn't 
I mean, it's a little bit harder to confirm. Um, Shallon Sweep was originally like this when it first came out, but mm-hmm. then they it got changed in the like in the Mejay patch to be able to knock down even in any hit stuns. So it's sort of back to being a pinning for like a hardcore pinning move with super arm and everything. Um, do you think the Valk sweep being obeying hit stun rules is appropriate, or do you think it's not good enough as a ganking move? It needs to be able to knock people down. Regards of hit stun, or you know, Shaolin's too strong and needs to come back down to do Valk's level. I think Valk's is completely fine. I think it's exactly how you want a ganking tool to be, where it yeah. confirms a lot of damage, but it, it but it is very prone to mess up. Like you you need to learn the timing. You need to be good with the timing on it. But Shaolin's is like you if you land the key stance kick. I think it's pr- almost a hundred zero, right? Yeah, yeah. because like you get. You get like four heavies. It's it's crazy. But I think mm-hmm. I think the way Valks works is how mm-hmm. Shaolin should work. Yeah, you just Shaolin's like Shaolin and there's like nothing. You can't you can't mess it up. It sweeps every single time. No matter mm-hmm. GB toe stab bash. That's, yeah, that, that's, attack, that's, what that's, that's what he was at first, right? Like the first game, exactly, he, used, yeah. he used a light to use a sweep and then heavy heavy. And that's still massive damage. But you know, like I don't know if it's a bug or whatever. But that's how it should have stayed, really. Yeah, fair enough. I think it was probably a bug because it wasn't a document. Yeah, I assume it is. You know, it doesn't make a, a, a lot of sense to just change it for no reason. And Dox isn't yeah. even 100 0. It gets him down to like, I think like 30, 35 health around there without feeding bench. But I think it's still far more balanced than Shaolin's. Yeah. Fair enough. So. Indeed. Especially what you could do with Shaolin off of just a counter guard break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a I, pretty crazy I, thing. But... We've made the comparison to Shaolin, and I would like to, to to redirect something back to what Bliss was talking about earlier in regards to the safety of sweep on on whiff and the counter guard break vulnerability and whatnot, and how it's low. The can in comparison to Shaolin, Shaolin sweep basically you chain into heavy, and you're pretty much safe in most scenarios. Do you believe that? I mean, just with that comparison, does that? Does that bring any other thoughts to, to mind with that discussion? Well, well, dodge attack still punish it. Yeah, and dodge attack it will still work. Mm. Yeah, right. Valak's is actually safer than Shaolin Sweep. Yeah, and you also have um, a, another mix-up option against Shaolin Sweep. If you don't think he's going to let the heavy fly, you can dodge and GB, and that GB will, like, if he faints his like, follow-up heavy, it's a guaranteed GB. So mm. it, it's, it's just a mix-up option you can mix in there. Yeah. So... But do you think? Oh, I don't want to digress too much. But do you think Shaolin Sweep is too safe, or do you think it's fine? I think it's good um, like it is. Yeah, I think it's fine. It is. It takes Fair a lot enough. of work to get into it. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More work to get into than Valk Sweep, would you say? Um. Yeah. 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 I, actually, definitely, definitely, because uh, his neutral game is a lot weaker than hers. Okay. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Um, talking so back into I guess offense and and things like that, we have there are some other changes that were made to Valk other than her sweep, and and the core mix up. She also got enhanced dodge attacks, and they improved the iframes and sideways movement on the side ones and forward movement on the for, on the forward one, and they also changed her dodge uh, her chain lights to be the top light used to be four hundred milliseconds, and that's now five hundred milliseconds. And finally, uh, there's her zone attack, which is now 500 milliseconds from, I mean, it said 600 milliseconds in the patch notes, but actually in, I think it was 700 milliseconds, not 600 milliseconds. Yeah, so pretty sure it was, was actually. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm just double checking now, but I'm 95, yeah, it was 700 milliseconds beforehand. So it's now 500 milliseconds. Um, what are people's thoughts? Well, we'll talk about the zone first. What are people's thoughts on the zone? Because I've heard some people saying that it's the best zone in the game. Yeah, best zone in the I mean, game. It's the best zone, but it's actually it's so good. good. Now I can be recovery, can zone to full block and shit. That's actually such a good zone. I like it. I hate it. It needs to be 600. It, it should not be 500. <laughs> it's way too <laughs> strong. I, it. I would be fine with it being 600. Like, I, I would totally be fine with that, yeah. I, I don't mind it being 500, but I would be fine 600 too, like... What about uh, like a compromise at five sixty six? I don't I know think, if it really matters at this point. I like, think six hundred is uh, six hundred. It has a massive hitbox, like has probably one of the biggest hitboxes in the in the game, and has amazing forward momentum. So I think it should be six. It should be six hundred, like the other yeah. ones are. 
Like yeah, the Hitbox. The Nabushis. The Hitbox is quite insane. You clear half a midges with one swing. <laughs> what are people's thoughts about allowing the zone to be accessible after the bash? So you bash instead of light, you can bash in zone. Mm-hmm. But that allows you to bash to use in yeah. team fights a bit easier. It's getting itself peeled, basically. Yeah, I don't think she really needs it, to be honest. I feel like uh, the risk of throwing the bash in a team fight is okay, you know? Like, you need to be a bit careful when you throw it. Um, so I, I think it's okay that she cannot... She, she cannot write right now? She cannot throw the zone, or can she throw the zone? No, she can't. She, you can oh, yeah, yeah, on, I think, on I think it's okay like that. You can do is a light. You can't do yeah. anything afterwards. Yeah, I, th- I think that think that's fine like that. I don't think sh- she needs to be able to zone. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I think it's um, it moves pretty maybe, far. Maybe if it was six hundred, it would. I don't know. Maybe. I think maybe um, it wouldn't be so much against it. It requires skill to know when to punish somebody with the the bash, like when to start aggressing on them, when to position, when somebody's in chain, when your teammate can peel them, and I think having such a strong mix up like that's unreactable and that catches external dodges making that be able to self peel i think it would just be i i think it's too much like uh, the way it is right now it's just requires good communication to use but when you communicate correctly i think it is like she's definitely one of the top 2v2 characters um okay so zone is very very powerful should be maybe 600 milliseconds or instead of 500 milliseconds that's i guess fair Fair, fair choice. Especially, it, st- it was still 15 damage, wasn't it, in the testing grounds? Which is higher than most 5 mm second zones. So, yeah, they neither need to nerf the damage on it or more likely leave it at 600 mm seconds. It's funny that they had, they said it was 600 mm seconds during the, in the patch notes. Implied that they tried it at 600 mm seconds and decided mm-hmm. they wanted to make it 500. Um, which in fact, Val- Valks had that problem in the past when they said um, they. They moved this in the first in the first rework she had. They said they moved the sweep from six hundred milliseconds to five hundred milliseconds, and actually, it was seven hundred milliseconds. They moved it to six hundred milliseconds, so it ended up never being a, a mix up all these years. Um, but what about the the chain lights? So they've cha- they've gone rid of the top chain lights, which are five hundred mil- four hundred milliseconds, and now they are five hundred milliseconds. Do you think this is a step in the right direction, or do you think they should? Be doing the opposite thing and making them all four hundred milliseconds. I think, I think it's fine. I, I don't really have an opinion. I think it's fine to have them five hundred. I do agree with what they said. You know, like um, in in the Warriors, then they were like um, if you uh if it's only four hundred miss on top, good players will just block top, and bad players will just get hit by it over and over again. So, I do think that makes sense. You just change it. You know, um, I don't really have an opinion. If, whether it should be 400 and 500. I think she has good enough offense to leave them as 500. I don't think she needs 400. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Hit me. I'm bad players. <laughs> Freeze, what are, your, what are your opinions on it? I agree with you. Like you always keep saying, more fun yeah, than less lights. <laughs> I understand. I understand the, the reasoning that you guys don't want the third light the side ones to be 400 because that would be absurd i agree with that <laughs> but if we just make the the, the chain ones the, the the first chain the second attacks just give that on the direction of 400 we'll be fine with that i Why think not? that if you... that. I yeah think but instead of doing it... that just on valk i think we should do that across the board yeah sure anything. go ahead yeah yeah i'm with you on that okay i guess i could sort of get behind that the thing to keep in mind like is and of course this is you know you guys might know more offhand than I can think of, but if you change it to 400 millisecond, it can it can change the way that she gets you know she gets door chains you know a little bit quicker than she ends up getting. It can adjust how what ganks are optional at that point. Yeah, they'd need to. So if they were speeding up 500 millisecond lights to be 400 milliseconds, it would need to be done concurrently with changing chain links. So you'd have to change them. Uh, otherwise you end up with scenarios where you can't dodge them and that kind of thing so they need to move the chain links from 200 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds and then the the dodge attacks the attacks themselves from four, 500 to 400 oh hey there is, um, we have I think that's Will Will M right is sir it? hello Whoa. how are you hello Will's Will. here hello how are you doing doing alright you have got some listen. opinions on the Valkyrie rework to, to share with us uh, nothing professional. I barely played against it, but it was 
pretty interesting. So I don't know. Fair enough. I, just, I don't. I don't even think it needs a couple small tweaks, and it'll be good. Can I? Can I ask as a consensus? Do we all believe that, generally speaking, that the direction they're going with Val and like the sort of meshing her identity with this like defense slash offense um, mix is that is that all kind of being well received? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, that one like definitely, well. definitely thumbs up for me. Yeah, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. All right, well, cool. everybody, everybody's in in a in a unanimous approval, which has never happened in Frona discourse before. Everybody's happy. <laughs> what? What's going on? This is can't this can't be right. Um, let's just check. There's anything more on her list of chain things? Oh, I guess the the running attack and chain, which is, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, it's nice, but kind of a bit weird. That I mean, it's not weird. It, they also added it to Tandy as well, except they didn't I, mention it in the, in the patch notes for Tandy. I mean, the I running mean, attack is still bad, right? I, it's. <laughs> No, well, it hits minions a lot. Better. I mean, yeah, come on, you a running attack that <laughs> you, you used to, to clear minions. I don't know. I, I think that, forward reach, I thought, but I've always been a bit of an advocate where I, I think that, and, and there may be some. I'm sure there's like a couple of scenarios where it's like, okay, maybe not. But I generally think, generally speaking, that should be kind of a default part of a kit where a running attack should be able to chain. I know PK obviously doesn't have that option, but he. You know, I, I think generally speaking, it should be able to, to chain for most characters. Yeah, I mean, I think it's we're we're at the point now where more characters chain from their running attacks than don't chain from their running attacks. I think right. there's only a few of the original cast left that that don't, or they have I weird like running attacks that do particular yeah. things. It's funny like to that. me how the um this fed of BP to make um this running attack more useful, but then when you do it, you're just stuck there. So <laughs> yeah, you don't chain afterwards. Yeah. Any recovery cancel into the full block? Um. Anymore. I think so. But you don't think so? No. Not oh, fair enough. That's something they should, I guess, they look into for all all characters to that don't currently have running attacks that can be useful and and open you open things up when you run in there. Um, although I'm sure everybody would be really happy to buff Raider. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think something to keep in keep in mind with the whole running attack thing is yes, you can like go into you can you can lock on really quick and you can effectively get a running attack if you time everything just right where you can do your dodge attack, but that takes extra time to get into your uh get into your guard and then get that started and so on and so forth. So I think everybody having running attack would make sense. Uh, fair. Even if it can't chain out of it. So there's other one more thing that I kinda wanna bring up for Valkyrie, um, which is not in the patch notes because it was well clearly not intended but there was a lot of weirdness with valkyrie's um rework that tiandi didn't have and some of these things were pretty strange so basically reintroduction of old bugs so blitz mentioned that you, you can, <laughs> yes you can sticky dodge um Sticky dodging is back. Was back on Valkyrie TG. You said she oh, could also diagonal me. back dodge. She had her guard changed. Was like went solid on back dodge. She could also then she could still uh, team deflects and minion deflects were back on her and ally crushing counters. Yep. Um, was there any other weird? There was one more weirdness, wasn't there? Freeze or my getting... Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I was like, yeah. So they made they made they made the rework of an old building. Is that what they did? Because that's not an old bug that got fixed. Uh, like, yeah, a lot of them were really really old um, yeah. bugs, which is which is interesting that they have been uh, this rework potentially has been brewing a long time. Oh, um, I have it. Third side light doesn't ledge anymore. Oh yeah, that one. But that was, that was that's a new bug, bug, isn't it? Because that was was it? Is was that, that new? Ever a, was old, that old, old old new? I don't know. I'm not I sure. I'm not sure. I remember that used to be a bug on um, Nusha's finisher heavies, but I don't remember it being a bug on Valkyrie's fin light finishers. So I don't know. That one's probably a new bug, <laughs> although it could be an old one. I don't know. Um, it is interesting, sort of that pit glimpse into the development process for how long they've been potentially brewing this this Valkyrie rework up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's any anybody else had any thoughts thoughts on these things, um, or it's just something I wanted to mention. 
Mm, you just want to work for them, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it yeah. all has to go, right? Like all the old bugs need to get fixed again. I think yeah. Sticky Dog should be brought back to the game and really add some skill, you know? When you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll remove him. I'll remove him. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, Rippy, I think you're only a mod here. I think I have to delete you from the from the server. Oh, no. <laughs> Later. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just it's an interesting window into the past of old old things that haven't got changed. And I yeah, I do wonder if they well, presume it's a good thing that these could it be could down. it be that they took like the Val the Val build from before the first rework or something? I don't know. Yeah, it could be. That's I mean, I, I don't know how they, they made that, but I was thinking that was maybe an alternative to the to the first rework they had in their head, and they just pushed it this time. Hmm, well, that's interesting. You think they might have had it in the? I don't, I don't think they were ready to go that far back then, because if you remember the reworks back then, it was like let's give a small buff and then nerfs half of the character, you know, half yeah. of the kit of the character. Like they didn't want, they did not want to do oh, wow. the reworks back then, so. Now that you mention it, we barely had any compensation nerfs. I completely forgot about that, that they really did that back in the day. Like, they buffed a little bit and then, I don't know, messed something else up. Yeah. No, I'm just yeah, thinking about that's good. the yeah. original rework really didn't really that. have any nerfs in it. Like, if I Maybe it didn't, but it didn't have really any buff. Like, the well, it had, was, still, yeah, it was it, so bad. Like, the, you know, they, they, they didn't want to make any, any chores good. You know, like... Orochi got 700 reworks and he was still, sh I don't want to say that, but very bad, you know? <laughs> but say shit as fuck. Well, Excuse your French. When, when Valkyrie was first reworked, I remember there being a lot of, actually, a lot of complaints about, about the character being too too good because of the, the soft faint into Bash was 500 milliseconds, which at the time was, you know, you could delay it and it actually became semi unreactable at the time. Um, the sweep being central milliseconds was quick, was quickly reactable, but it was still less reactable than it had been beforehand. And she got all the chains, and she got faster lights. So I don't remember there being many nerfs with Valkyrie from Valkyrie's original rework, other than not being able to dodge out of shield tackle, which was god awful defensively. Yeah, my so shield I don't know tackle if I... doesn't put the enemy underground anymore. What am I gonna yeah, do? Yeah, down on the ground. Oh yes, I guess that's the. The, the nerf it had. I mean, that needed to go, man. Like, yeah. It's speed so up as well. So it's, it's interesting that Shield Tackle in the live game, currently, it's 400 milliseconds. And it would work. And it, it clearly works as offense just by changing the input from a forward dodge to the back dodge to a forward dodge. Um, even if it would be more risky if it was in real life. If it was, if it was, sorry, if they use the live version in this testing ground, it'd be more, more risky and less valuable because the damage is much lower and it's more risky on whiff. But it is still a viable mix up if you're in someone's face. Um, so it's just an uh, interesting, well, glimpse back into the past. I'm not really sure if I've got a point to make <laughs> from this. Well, um, I can ask. I got a couple of questions that I can ask about Val. Go ahead. Yeah. So those of you that did play her, in maybe maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just that I hadn't played Valk as much. I started playing Valk on live uh, again here and there recently, and. The it, is it just me or does it feel like the light attacks or at least the crushing counters like the windows for for light the hitbox for for lights are a little bit better? Oh yeah, she has a deceptive hitbox on her lights for some reason. I external people with the lights way too much that I think I mm -hmm. would. Yeah, I think it's good. Well, yeah, I, I I personally like it too. I think it definitely needs. I know she's she's got a spear and she's poking, but at the same time, like you know, you're gonna as you're throwing it forward, like you're gonna slipe somebody's. Uh, I know we're not going go too much into realism, but like you know, you might tag somebody on the side of their arm or on their face or something. You know, um, so I don't think it, look, I, it doesn't look like they're slightly deceptive, but they're not. They're also not like unrealistic not compared to good. Her, the way her moves are. I don't think I'd never get feel like, oh, how did I hit me? Or right. How did I hit yeah, you I, then? As much. I feel like on live, it's just it's like, man, I should have I should have tagged that that person, and it just they're like right there, they're right on me, and on and on. The testing grass, I did not get that feeling at all. I, I I remember commenting on that while playing. Like it is, oh. it's definitely it's de so. I wanted to see you know what everybody else's thoughts are. If I was just kind of imagining it, but uh, that's that's good. And I know we we briefly touched on this earlier, but I, I imagine this is a really big point of, or this was a really big point of discussions whenever this came up. Is uh, we were talking about the whole uh, the damage on the bash, and we kind of briefly touched that. 
do we do we is it is the consensus that 20 is good based on the risk or do you say like 16 or 18 would be more appropriate or is it need to be even even more which i i don't think it necessarily needs to be more but throwing it out there for the fairness of the or upper lower i personally think it's fine um i think she's got comparatively low health and mm -hmm. not got huge damage elsewhere in her kit so i think personally it, with the way that mix up works i think it's it's okay um, mm -hmm. i wouldn't want it any higher but also don't really think it'd be that much lower 18 would yeah. probably okay but 20 is yeah. fine yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat. Eighteen or twenty. Um. Okay. Email? Well, whilst just before we finish off, in that case, I want to throw back as a general type thing again. Um. What do we think is the character's place in the meta coming up? If she released like this, what would where she, where would she be? Would she be meta viable? Would she be second comp, or just below the second comp, or uh, or rubbish completely? Um, and do you, what other little changes would you like to see? Um, I want to throw that out to, uh, let's see, Will, have you got a thought on that? Uh, I don't think I played against her enough to have a, like, a valid opinion on it. Fair, fair enough. Do you, do you have any, uh, are you, you do, uh, no, well, well, I'll come back to you in, in, in a moment after we finish with Alk. <laughs> um, well, Freeze, what are your thoughts? I think it depends a lot how Shaolin is going to get nerfed or not, whether the sweep is going to get the same treatment as, as Valkyries. Because right now I can't see Valkyrie replace anybody as a ganke. But may, maybe like as, as a side grade you can pick her, but I think she'd never be picked over like Shinobi or, or Shaolin as, as, as a replacement ganke. But yeah, I think that everybody's going to try it. They're going to Maybe not brute force, brute force her into the meta, but I think a lot of people had fun with her, so they want to play her, and I think that's yeah. always a, a big reason when you see a comp player, no, I do want to play that one. So I'm going to crowbar that character into our composition, so I can see that happening with Valkyrie, and the longer you play a character, maybe they find something else that makes her extremely viable then. But yeah, I can definitely see her being played. Uh, there's no question there. I think she's top tier. I think, um, yeah, definitely. She believes. I think she's belongs with the uh, the like. If if there was only if there was not conquest, she'd be in the top four characters that be in the meta. I think she. Oh really? Her, her feet. Her one v ones are very good. She's top tier on reactable offense. You know, um, two v twos are extremely good. She's also top tier in that. And gank does a lot of damage. And the best thing is, it's initiatable off of unreactable offense. That's easy to catch people externaling you. It's very fast, so that works. And uh, with Shinobi being banned, ganks are very important. And most importantly, her feats are the best out of any character in the meta. In Bounty Hunter, Jug, Fury Flask. So she, she's, she's great in every aspect. I think, uh, I think she's definitely played. Fair enough. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to see the, um, how, where on the scale it, it falls down. Do you think this is going to be like Blitz saying, like top four characters, presumably in that case means a compulsory pick in either first or second composition if we're playing Conquest. Um, whereas Freeze thinks it's probably closer to being a kind of preference. Blitz, you clearly had a lot of fun playing the character, right? Um, so your opinion Wait. might be somewhat inflated from how much you how, how much fun you had. I'll play. I'll play whoever's whoever's the best. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm I'm in, really interested to see how the the character. Um, if the character comes out like this, but do you think that do you think there are, are any tweaks that we need that that needs to happen before the character um, goes live? Um, no, you shouldn't be able to get a GB off of uh, off of like block lights and block heavies. I don't think, especially with how strong her all block is now as her main form of offense. There's a lot of mm -hmm. people attacking into the uh, the all block, and I don't think she be able, she should be able to guarantee a GB off that. Fair point. Um, Riffy, any thoughts from you? Uh no, I mean that makes sense. Uh, definitely, definitely think the bash is good enough punish for getting the the full walk. Uh, Come on, can, can we even make anything do that? Else to add. I mean, I'm just sorry to interrupt you, but can we even do that? Because I mean, it's a superior block. You the, can the full I mean, block. Um, so, but can can we just do we have to like not let her chain into? No, it's not even a chain because she just like fade into neutral. Yeah, so you're not gonna let her GB out of neutral then. Is that what we're gonna so do? You'd need, to, you'd need to change the um, recovery to how quickly she can faint afterwards. Um, 
Like I mean, even can... by a frame, it's like a frame perfect timing, right? In live, like, you can well, against it. lights, yeah, but not against heavies. I think against heavies is a not a generous window, but it's not too hard to get. Yeah, yeah right, against can't... heavies, I can see that. You, you, being able to do it against heavies, yeah. I, I mean, I'm I might agree with that one, but not against not against lights. Yeah, I'm, I'm not right. disagreeing with anything. I'm just thinking how we uh, how they do well, that, right? Uh, how you would code. So, because you, you you can't you can't change like you can't make it like a normal block, right? So it needs well, to you, stay a superior block, right? Yeah. But the, the difference is then how long the Valk sits in the superior block after blocking something before she can then do before she can then faint. So if you think about it, all the other characters with full blocks can faint their full blocks. They can press faint and they leave the full block. Except Wouldn't that make only, some shit dodgeable then? Only Valkyrie like, can... Like... No, it depends. If So if you can still back the, the window to... If you... you Well, the character is sitting in full block, you, hit, you input an attack, you hit an attack in the full block, you then go yes. into the... You get and then go into the full block reaction state, so you're currently in the animation from that, and you can then branch from that immediately into the bash, or you yes, can branch exactly. back immediately into a faint, right? Other yes, characters but, but like can a, like a, go straight into the punish, but they can't go straight into the faint. So you just yeah, but if you uh, if you force a longer reaction between blocking and bashing, wouldn't that against some attacks mean that the the player throwing the attack could dodge? Yes, but then you don't because have. But you don't. They don't have to be. This, I don't think they have. To I, mean, the I don't same know if it's what Spen is talking about, but um, can you just make it that if you full block an attack, you have to go for the punish and can't immediately feign your full block? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, I, yeah, I okay. just think it's slower by 33 ms. I think having more options is good. Like, I think you should be able to feign out of it if you get hit. I just think you make it a, like just a frame slower, and I think you're fine. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to grab lights. If you just make I mean, a couple of mills, a couple of milliseconds slow would would you know even two hundred milliseconds slow would make it, it still feel very responsive in the same way as you can, um, you know with with um I'm thinking with what's his face, uh Aramusha you can full block you can blade blockade and then you can dodge immediately afterwards and it's that's that feels very very natural but it's actually still a four hundred millisecond window, um and the same could apply to to um, Valkyrie's fainting, just have it for slightly delayed, and so you can bash straight away, but you have to wait a little bit longer if, if you want to faint in guard break. Um, I'm fine with yeah, that. If they can distinguish, then it makes sense. That would work. I imagine they can because it's because they have it on some of the full blocks already. Um, uh, yeah. So other, I guess, uh, uh, a quick summary in that case of other things that we've mentioned for Valkyrie, she needs to have the the zone is probably a little bit too powerful and needs to be nerfed a little bit. Maybe slower, maybe slightly less damage, probably slower. Um, she needs to have the sweep be vulnerable to dodge attacks at least, and potentially dodge GB if the mix-up was stronger. Um, she potentially needs blue on some of her finishes to catch mix, catch dodges away from the um, sweep. And maybe she should have 400 millisecond chain lights um, instead of not having any of them. And and I think that is, pr and 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 overall, people are pretty happy with the character is going to sit, um, whereas she's going to even if she were to be released today with all of the the like still missing bits, um, and I guess not with the weird bugs like sticky dodging and and <laughs> team deflects and so on, um, but if those would be fixed, then the character if the character could be released today and would still be still be good and people would still be happy with it. Yeah, I'd play her for my team. Cool. Um, I, I think like that's pretty, yeah, pretty much the same, and, th and that uh, sentiment was a similar for Tiandi as well. If I remember correctly, people were pretty happy with how the character it feels, which I, I think makes this probably one of the most positively perceived testing grounds for quite some time. I'm trying to think of a testing ground now where opinions were positive on. I mean, I th since the seven character testing ground is probably about the best. Best received one, really? Would you say? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think it's pretty good, and I think a an interesting kind of, I guess, not necessarily, I guess, a quirk or something about these two heroes is that with the reworks that are being brought in, it adds a potential. I guess a bonus to that is that this adds a lot, uh, some potential for some very interesting ganks for both heroes that could shift where they may end up in the meta because of all the, you know, their their the additions and like the kickoff of Tiandi actually having a follow up and uh, the sweep actually being 
you you know you being able to be utilized and as or use it like I swear to... there is a, there is a timing for that kick to be useful. I haven't found it yet, but I swear it's out there. Oh no, yeah, oh, I, I hear it. Uh, difficult to confirm. It was like like the Valkyrie one where you need to confirm it off. It's quite tricky to confirm, but when you do, it has super armor all the way through the knockdown. So mm -hmm. it was kind of nuts. Actually, and that's something we haven't mentioned that I did think needs changing on TND, not have super armored knockdowns anymore, because you know, because being hit by that kick in a team fight was pretty much death. You would just eat the, every attack. The funny like... Sorry, uh, I, I I did mean to. I just uh, the funny thing about that is a ship. I think ship was the TND, and we ended up confirming his kick, and I, I was on Val. And I went for the heavy, and the heavy tracked the uh, kick. So the forward movement shot across the screen, and right as the the animation showing the slice across the the screen where she was hitting, it was so strong and so powerful that my game froze up for about a good ten seconds. And <laughs> and the match. Yep, the game's like, all right, you've had enough. Get that, get out. Yeah, yeah. fuck that. Um, right. Well, before we. <laughs> Uh, before we wrap up, um, I know that Will, you came in a little bit late. Do you have any things you wanted to mention about TND or the counter guard break changes that you didn't get a chance to say at the beginning? Um, uh, or not or... much. I like the counter guard break changes a lot. Uh, those are really nice. Uh, TND, uh, I don't like him. But <laughs> I don't know. His animations were pretty weird. He was pretty spammy, but I like the direction they went with him. So I don't know, I'm kind of excited to see how they rework it, but I think you guys pretty much covered everything. Cool. Oh, Memes is here as well. I didn't, sorry, didn't, didn't mention you earlier, Memes. Have you got a thing, anything you want to say, finishing thoughts? Uh, no, really, I didn't play against them too much, but all I wanted to say is, uh, well, I'm sad I will not be able to GB spam you anymore. Yeah, get better. <laughs> I cannot GB spam anymore. I'm very sad. Okay, well... Know. That's a a good thing to let. Yeah. Let's hope. Let's hope nobody else to GB spam for much longer. It's a good um, thing, this one. I think Free said something very important on this video, uh, and I'm very much I very much agree with that sentiment. The fucking GB changes should have been implemented yesterday. Like, holy shit, these are so important for the game. I think these should be implemented as soon as possible. Yes, I would agree with that as well. Maybe we'll, mm -hmm. if we're lucky, they'll arrive in the title update too. Um, in October, which is actually only less than a month away now, so if we're fingers crossed for that, I think that'll be the earliest we can see them, I imagine. Um, yeah. Right, well, I would, in that case, should probably wrap up the um, this dojo. Well, I, I don't know if you can do a you can do a raid um, uh, stag and send us send us towards setback because it's been a long time since he's been playing. Oh, where's that now? It's, it's, it's raid up Tony, right? Don't don't don't, don't raid. Well, let me finish saying saying my mm. wrapping up, and then and then afterwards, then you can raid. Um, I'll, Mac. The tunnel, no, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll it figure it out. Thank All you. right. Um, but whilst thank you very much for joining us, and thanks for listening to us chat chat for some time. Um, we will be doing another dojo soon on, and we're going to be discussing tournament rule sets and the recent into the fray tournament one by which was won handily by blitz here i just want to say <laughs> big shout out to to blitz na number one um and we want to talk we're going to be talking about um the future of tournaments and what changes we want to see and which ones were good um and that should be interesting i'm aiming to do that next weekend so come along then we might be doing, in between time, we might be doing another dojo on the Info Hub update, which is coming out very, very soon. So we'll oh. do a little um, a little walkthrough of that for you with Nutella. Um, and that's it, everything. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. I want to thank uh, Blitz, Freeze, Norgoz, Rippy, Shep. No um, worries. Yeah, uh, Stag for streaming, oh, yes. Will for joining along. Anton came in early. Um, memes and Laroncheros are sitting around as well. So, oh, is that the um, the punk rooster? Is this the character that is uh, the character, the person who's doing the? the yes, yes. He he made a post on the com sub. You know, you need to qualify by beating his son. Oh, oh, and wow. Then you okay. are qualified into like a round of sixteen, <laughs> and then you can right. win oh, yeah. a little bit of money. Well, let's go and see. And I think they're doing that right now. Yeah, and you have to watch that. 1v1 tournament, see who's going to win that. Yeah. Thank you I mean, his poor son going to have to go through like Anton and stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for watching this. The VOD will be on YouTube um, soon. Enjoy raiding this punk rooster. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Take care. We out? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get the rate working, sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, as long as we mute it. We're still here. I can shoot yeah. talk all the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll mute now, now. See everybody. Ben Shinobi. All right, let's talk about all the viewers behind their backs real quick. <laughs> uh, Joan like says, uh, no, we're still live. <laughs> okay, use raid now. All right, there we go. There it is. And really, his son, can that be? Just from... What? Absolutely. Maybe the calendar guy is the father. Goodbye, no, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, yeah.